Ham Radio saves lives once again, this time in Death Valley in California on the 10 meter band. And this happened this year in 2024. In fact, the article was posted this very month in 2024. Let's take a look at this right now. This is on the ARRL website, and they shared it on the Parks on the Air Facebook page, too, because this was done in a national park. Amateur Radio Saves Family in Death Valley National Park. Now, national parks are Parks on the Air and POTA Summits. Parks on the Air is a very popular program inside the amateur radio community today where you go to national parks, state parks, wildlife management areas, historical areas, and uh, places like that, and you set up a radio and you make contacts out and you try to get people on the air. And once you get 10 contacts, you have activated the park. You can submit those logs to pota.app, the website, P-O-T-A dot A-P-P, and then it kind of keeps like a score and a points and it awards you several things. It's not a contest because there's no start and end to it, and you don't really get anything for doing it other than just kind of like PDF files and certificates you can hang on your wall at home. But POTA is a very fun program to participate in and technicians can participate in the 10 meter band on the single sideband section which is 28.300 to 28.500 megahertz it doesn't really say in this article if these people were technicians or not but 10 meters is a very fun band i've done a lot done a lot of pota activations myself on 10 meters recently because the band has been up but this article says this is on the arl's website Death Valley National Park is a remote desert in Southern California where mobile phone networks are spotty at best. This is in 2024. This is in April of 2024 when this uh, when this article was posted. A radio amateur and his family were enjoying the park when their vehicle became stuck in the mud in a dangerous area. Stuck in the mud in a desert. Remote desert. I found that to be interesting and strange because if it's a desert, why is it muddy? Now, granted... I don't live near a desert. I've driven through a desert. Parts of Texas are desert, and I've never been to Death Valley, but I've always wanted to go to Death Valley and activate that national park. So maybe one day you'll see that on a video that I do. But anyway, for whatever reason, they are in a muddy spot, stuck in the mud in a desert. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I just I just found that an interesting tidbit of the story. Without access to a cell network, the ham called for help on the 10 meter band right here. According to the news released from the Black Swamp Amateur Radio Club, Caleb Gustweiler, Gustwiller, Gustweiler, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, KD8TGB jumped into action. Gustweiler was monitoring from Ohio, so this family is in Death Valley, California, and this other ham, uh, KD8TGB, is in Ohio. He was monitoring from Ohio when he picked up a distress call. He was able to hear the call sign and the general location of the ham in distress. He lost the signal to noise. In other words, the signal was the signal he was hearing, the distress call he was hearing was way down in the noise. A lot of HF noise on top of it, a lot of static on top of it. Hard to pull a weak signal out. Typical HF ham radio, nothing surprising there. So he wrote a post on the Parks on the Air Facebook group asking for other hams to listen for calls. So Facebook participated in a ham radio rescue. There you go. You don't even need a license to be on Facebook. Apparently, they don't want me on there, though. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you want to get any professional 3D printing, CNC machine printing, circuit board printing of various styles and sizes, head over to PCBWay for all of their professional-grade manufacturing and processing services that they offer. They offer many, many things on the website, and if you go over there and get something from them, be sure to tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you and thank them for sponsoring this channel. Several hams contacted emergency officials in Southern California, which led to the ham and their family being rescued within a few hours by park rangers. This ham in Ohio heard a distress call on 10 meters, couldn't pull the signal out, posted on Facebook, said, you guys get on this frequency on 10 meters. Other people got on the frequency on 10 meters, heard the distress call because of different propagation, different areas. Maybe someone was a lot closer to him. They got emergency officials involved, and the club stated on their Facebook post, without Caleb, KD8, TGB, hearing the distress call, it could have quickly become a very deadly situation for the operator and his family. Presumably, even with a mud pit that they're trapped in, a desert is going to be very hot, very hot, and uh, hopefully they brought enough water, but very hot. I did a POTA video one time, and I said, you always want to hydrate when you're doing POTA, because you never know. You never know what's going to happen. It's always a good idea to have water with you everywhere you go. 
because you never know. But it could get very hot in the desert if they got stuck there overnight. It's probably got really cold in the desert, and they might have not brought cold weather gear because they weren't planning on being there overnight. So congratulations. Uh, good job, uh, Caleb Gusweiler, KD8TGB. And good job to the Parks on the Air Facebook group. If you guys are not a member of the Parks on the Air Facebook group, I highly recommend. If you're interested in Parks on the Air, and if you're still on Facebook, if you haven't gotten kicked off of Facebook for absolutely no reason at all, as I have, then head over to uh, Facebook.com and check out the Parks on the Air Facebook group. You can find some very good information on there about the POTA program and about operating and about who's doing what on Parks on the Air, new programs that come up, whatnot. One of the most fun activities to do on HF, but also as a technician, once again, 10 meter band is totally open. Well, not totally open, but a good portion of the 10 meter band is open to technicians for single sideband and FT8 which is part of the HF band, and 10 meters has been very much open right now. This article has been shared around a lot of places, but uh, since I've done these series of videos about ham radio rescues and ham radio saves lives, I wanted to share this with you. Have you guys heard this article before? Did you see the post on Facebook? Did you participate in the rescue? Put a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. 73.